everyone and welcome back to Do We Know Them? I'm Lily Marston here with Jesse Smiles and this is episode 76. We're on our way to 100 and it's pretty exciting. And if you know math, that's 24 away. Jesse's really good at math and counting, <laughs> so. Honestly, I just knew that last time we we realized it was 25 and then I do know that minus one, that's 24. But I do have a thought to get out before I forget it because I forget to do it every single time and then I get mad at myself. Halloween's coming up and I need to do a PSA. I don't know what this would be called, a poll. I, I don't know, we need help. We have no idea what the f to be for Halloween and how do we follow up last year? I don't know, but it's funny that you said that because I literally had a moment of like, <gasps> when is Halloween? Because I never look at the calendar. So I'm like, I don't know what date it is ever. It's a little over a month away. Yeah. So we we have some time but you guys like we need some goods we don't need like oh do like uh, i mean like i hate like couples costumes where it's i mean it wouldn't work because we're not together anyway but like the plug and the outlet yeah I'm like, i'll be the avocado you be the pit it's yeah like, no, no f that we want like something pop culture related that's not offensive but like that's hard that's hard to I, do so if any of you have any suggestions um please leave them in the comments or if you want to like keep it a secret maybe i was gonna DM say DM us? It, but i don't know if my or Tweet us, maybe. Yeah, tweet us, and then I'll delete it right after so no one sees. But if we do choose yours, um, we'll, like, screenshot it and give you a shout-out, whatever that means. I don't think that he actually like, means I don't know how anyone. valuable that is to people these days, but, like, yes, you'll get you'll, – we'll give you five <laughs> shout-outs. But, yeah, I just wanted to ask because we loved our costumes last year. It was so fun. Like, that was your idea, wasn't it? Of I course it was, it was your idea. <laughs> I look back at it, and although the green screen all – you know, we tried our best there. Oh, was that when my eyes disappeared? Yeah, that was that. <laughs> but it, they just turned pink. It's not like they disappeared. Your eyes just turned pink. So I'm a shapeshifter, you know. Besides that, we were, like, so – so spot on with the costumes. So I'm like, damn, Honestly, we gotta do it again. I feel like that one was just like, there was such a cultural moment. We needed to be like a, a big, like mainstream. I'm just trying to think all the stuff we've covered in the last year has been so dark that I feel like it's yeah. not, it doesn't work that well. But anyway, I just wanted to kind of do a little open source situation here and get some uh, some feedback on what we should be for Halloween. So let us know in the comments or somewhere. Thank you. Be very appreciate much appreciated. It. Yeah. Anyway, today's episode is, um, I'll throw it out there right now. It's not like particularly planned, which sometimes that ends up going well. But um, you may have noticed this past episode for the third time was like, maybe we should just switch to Tuesdays and Saturdays. No, if we do that, then we'll start uploading Wednesdays and Sundays. That's it's true. just That's the way true. it is. We're still trying. We were like a little behind and then it just, we haven't been able to catch up. But um, yeah. hopefully we will now. Yeah, I don't know where I was going with that. But um, topics. I think it's two, one, not TikTok, but it feels very TikTok. And um, I don't know a ton about it, but I think we can gather all of it through the Twitter threads. I like briefly went over it. Jesse's not familiar. It's the glasses lady. I know you know if you know. But Jesse, um, want to start with Fencegate, which is the most redundant TikTok drama name I've heard yet. But I'm very curious. Listen, I've had Fencegate in my pocket for a little bit, and I didn't know we were gonna do that. But let me let me pull it up because it's interesting. It's a, it's a little late now, right? It is. But when is it ever really late? Because you know, I've said this before, but like most of the people that watch the show don't even know what the. F we're talking about half the time. They're just like, well, you know, we just like to hear you talking about like random shit. I was gonna say, luckily, I feel like most of the people are more in line with me who's not super up to date on all the obscure TikTok dramas. And um, you, meanwhile, are like, let me write you a dissertation right now. <laughs> well, it's really the only content I consume. I like secondhand consume YouTube now. It's like primarily TikTok and then YouTube and then Fortnite. Those are like my, my lists. But yeah, Funskate happened on TikTok, of course. We've had... So many gates we've had kate gate yeah eyelash gate or lash gate it was called i think with Michaela. oh we never even included that the last run through of our gates yeah lash gate and then we had um tattoo gate yeah tattoo gate which that was a wild one um then just yesterday we covered what i guess is called marriage gate but we just called it gel combat lady drama <laughs> combat gel lady drama get it right lily what did i say you said gel combat lady Combat gel lady. <laughs> Same thing. Gets the point across. You know what I was talking about. <laughs> but um, how does Fencegate uh, play into those in terms of drama slash importance? And when I say importance, I mean like, is it stupid or is it like 
valid. I think that with all gates, usually, not so much lash gate, but with most gates, the common theme is that there's two sides. And there's like one side that maybe comes out first and everyone has this like unanimous opinion about it. And then something else comes out and everyone's like, oh, gasp, that is not what we thought was going on. And that is like consistent with, well, not so much with cake gate because everyone unanimously thought those cakes were ugly. But you know what I mean? Like she came out with that thinking she was going to like own the client. And then all of a sudden the client came out with the receipts of the cake and everyone was like that cake is uh, ugly. you know oh, what i mean we, like, we just did purse gate as well me trying to remember that what? <laughs> purse gate oh my god the she crazy lady the yeah, yeah. Underwear. yes so there's always like these two sides they both think they're right everybody usually agrees with just one that's like yeah, kind of say, the common but one thing is very gates. clearly wrong <laughs> yeah definitely this is interesting because the opinion started off one way and then well l let me not give too much away we'll just get started with the first video that went viral i love not knowing about them it's so fun You don't even have a survey you doing this stuff. How do you know I, I, get, I don't have a get your survey, oh. get the points, and then you do it. Don't... How do you know I don't have a survey? Okay, bring the survey and make the mark. Where is your survey? We have the survey. Show me. Well, sh show, show me. me Show me yours and I'll show you mine. And then you go on there. Not to show me yours and I'll show you mine. <laughs> what is your initial thoughts on that? I... What just happened? Mm. Yeah, I had similar thoughts. So obviously the neighbor who is the woman on the other side is angry. Obviously, everybody's angry, but she is, or someone else is chopping down that fence, like literally with a chainsaw, just like jaggedly cutting the top of it. That's all we know so far. And right? it's her fence that separates the yard. Well, I mean, maybe- it's No, that is the neighbor's fence. fence. Who's cutting down? She's cutting down their fence and they're asking like, do you have a survey, which is what says like the property line and where you could put a yeah, fence yeah, and all yeah. that stuff. And she basically says she does. And then he says he has one. And that's why they're like fighting. Like, you don't have a right to do this. And she's like, I do, I have a survey, blah, 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 blah. See, I've never dealt with a neighbor like this. I've just had like exceptional noise complaints. But like, I, if someone was like, if you owned your property and people were doing shit, like, no. I haven't dealt with a neighbor that does this, but my neighbor on the right side, I mean, I'm scared she even watches this. I don't know. She is the nosiest woman you have ever met in your entire life and like maliciously nosy. I don't know. She just wants to like gather information on everyone. It's very frustrating. I don't like it. But she hasn't like been annoying with like, oh, like your line is here and you need to, it, like we haven't dealt with that and I can't imagine this. So yeah. when I first saw this, I honestly, I have to be honest, I was a little confused first, but then I thought you can't cut someone's fence down that was like my first thought i'm like you can't literally take a chainsaw like there has to be another way to do this well and it makes me think of like general backyards or like next door neighbors it's not like there's two fences you share one so i guess whose is it well i don't know because a fence can only be put on your property line so yes the other side of the fence faces their house but like if it's on your property line it still is your fence it's not on the border of both houses where it's both people's property you know what i mean it's your property that they also share the other side of but like they can't get rid of it for instance if they felt yeah, like yeah i I guess it's just the only thing I'm thinking about is like, what if your neighbor had like a really fucking ugly fence? You could put up a fence like, I guess, because the property lines are probably like six inches or a little bit more or something like that, where they kind of split. So there'd just be like a like little tiny gap. Back to back. Them. And I've seen people do that before too. Yeah. So if you really hate their fence, you just put up your own. So then there was another video that came out that just kind of elaborated on this uh, disagreement, if you will. A peaceful day in the neighborhood was shattered when a homeowner experienced the shock of watching their fence being ripped apart. The audacious act wasn't from a random vandal, but from their next door neighbor, who has a reputation for causing so chaos among the community. What? So she's just trying to. Known locally like, as the neighborhood. Get it shorter? Camp. This woman not only orchestrated the destruction, but had her husband wield a chainsaw to carve through the fence. As if the audacity wasn't enough, the couple nonchalantly tossed the planks of wood without any remorse. Well, you don't get what are they going to do? The Gently put them down? Like a, like a right. Lawyer, lawyer. Not the way that you want. Lawyer, lawyer. I don't need a lawyer. You need a lawyer. You have to talk and come with the paper. Lawyer, lawyer. 
Come with the survey. You have your survey? Posting the video to her TikTok account, Tiffany Mirage wrote, Our neighbor has taken our fence down without any papers. She has threatened our contractors and has caused chaos in the neighborhood. You even have a survey you doing this stuff. Get, get the survey, get the points, and then you do it. Don't... No, do you know? I don't have a survey. Okay, bring the survey and put, make the march. We have the survey. Show me. Well, show, show, show me. me show me yours and I'll show you mine. And then you go on there. Why you Why have to do this? Hey, you don't, you don't have to yell. Please, hey. You don't have to yell. The irate woman seems to have had enough of the conversation and tells the neighbor to call the police. Please, police, you yell. You yell at me. Why I have to call police? I don't need it. I don't need to call the police, okay? I don't have to. I don't need it. I don't need it, okay? In an updated video, another resident of the property encounters the persistent neighbors. The incident, as expected, exploded on social media platforms. With an astounding 3.5 million views and counting, the altercation has everyone talking. While a significant majority rally in support of the victimized neighbors, expressing outrage and sympathy, there's a curious debate emerging about the ownership of the fence. A curious one? Feels like an obvious one. Everyone needs to calm down. What are your thoughts? My thoughts are that everyone needs to calm the f down and have a civil conversation about one, whose fence is this? Who has the right to cut it? And also I have a question. Why is she just like chopping off the first two feet of it? It looks like, like wouldn't, it, clearly they don't get along. Wouldn't she like not want to have a view of the neighbors? I feel like you're asking the important questions. Not so much of the view, but about like, why just a couple of feet off? That was an interesting point. But Daily Mail, you gotta really uh, give it to them, question uh, mark. Their reporting is interesting, isn't it? Especially once we know everything we know about this, it's like, oh, Daily Mail, you're so silly. But anyway, my favorite part was that they said she's known for causing chaos in the neighborhood. And then literally like 30 seconds later says, Tiffany Mirage, which is the daughter of the people who own the house who installed the fence, says that she causes chaos. So I'm like, wait, so the people who say she causes chaos is the people that are fighting with her? Like that's not being known for causing chaos. That's one person saying you're causing chaos. Also, you're not gonna elaborate on what other chaos that she has stirred up? Well, that's what I'm saying. They just like kind of like, they just uh, took the neighbor's word for it and reported it as if, you know, she was this menace, which honestly, when I saw this, like obviously she's very upset. They're chopping down the fence. That seems very drastic, right? It does. I was gonna say, I mean, regardless, based on just what we've seen so far, I would take the side of the other one because literally she is like unhinged screaming at them. Like we'll get into fence lady. That's what she got her name as like the people started calling her fence lady and she just went with it. But the problem is that when you do try to resolve something and you try to go a million different avenues and you become so frustrated because nothing's working and then you finally do become irate and people record it and be like, oh my God, look at this crazy bitch. You know what I mean? That's kind of what we're looking at here. This is literally like so much happened before this happened. And it's easy to look at this and just be like, wow, fucking lunatic, which is why I always say it. I said it when we covered Fusi. I don't like to judge people that are having these like really, really intense moments where they're so frustrated or screaming or losing it in any way, because it's like something got you here. You know what I mean? Like, this is not just like something someone wakes up and does like, I, I hope she has a redemption arc, but like, I, I would be like very caught off guard. And then if I thought maybe she was cutting my fence, then I would be upset back at, I don't know, regardless. She's speaking in her own language and I want to like read what 
the subtitles say so that we can all understand. Um, she says, hello everyone, I am the fence lady. There has been a couple of videos regarding me cutting my fence. I wanna use this opportunity to tell my side. The following video was recorded this morning. And so she shows her fence and it says, this fence was blocking the pathway. There was an AC here. So on the side of her house, there's an AC unit that she can no longer access because of the fence. And she says she wants to remove the AC, but she can't because the fence is in the way. And if you look, look at how close that fence is to her property. It is on her house. So she says the drain was only installed halfway. Only now did I install it. It was leaking for many years. Basically, she starts saying she wants to like make repairs to that side of the house and she can't even reach it or access it because the fence is on her property. And she says, now that they finally moved the fence, I can install. This has caused me a lot of pain. I have tried to communicate with them many times. According to the survey from the government, this fence is on my property. I have the right to remove it. Even so, I tried to peacefully resolve this issue. I delivered a notice to them to move the fence hoping that they would take action and move the fence. She says, however, nothing was done. On May 15th, I received two letters from their lawyer. They want to take me to court. They say I'm harassing them. And then she comes out, Tiffany Mirage, and starts spraying her with a hose. Oh my God. Okay, literally she was just talking. Oh no, that's not Tiffany, that's her sister. That's the sister of the girl who was originally filming and posting everything. But she says basically that every time she interacts with them, it's painful. You can tell what I've had to deal with over the years. And she's literally just standing there pretending that she's like, watering her grass, but she clearly like soaked her. And it was unprovoked as well. Like she just came out and did that. So we don't know what she's dealt with over the years. So I guess my question is clearly the fence is a problem. She can't access things on her property, but um, how long has it been like that? Well, that fence looked very newly built. She says on May 15th. So it's probably been a couple months max, like maybe I would say, I don't know, three or four oh, months I missed that the they've been in the process. Yeah, she okay. said on May 15th, she sent them a notice. So a little bit before that it was built. But like, I have never in my fucking life seen a fence that close to a house. Are you kidding me? I don't even need to look at the survey. There's no fucking way in hell that that is on their property. Well, no, and that's what I'm curious. I'm like, shouldn't they be worried for that? Because they would get in trouble? Honestly, I don't know. I know that there's a lot of issues with neighbors and property lines and things like this happening. I've never seen it quite this bad where it's that close, but like a lot of people just want more room <laughs> and like really don't give a fuck. I don't know how building that, even the builders would be like, okay, yeah, sounds good. Like, And I get that there's like always kind of a back and forth, but it seems one, I guess my question was, it looked like she was just cutting off the top. Was that just like a uh, like the first step and then she was just gonna keep cutting. That part is never clarified. Because I don't really understand how just taking off the top would have fixed the situation. Well, and she said they moved the fence and I'm like, Jesus, it moved like six inches. Like that's fucking nuts. I still feel like it's too close. So she receives a notice. No, it she says, sends the notice. This is what she sent to the- Oh, she sends this. Okay. It says, dear neighbors, I am the owner of the address. Uh, and if I've inquired with the city regarding the zoning of my property at blah, 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 the south border of my lot is one and a quarter inch away from the south wall of my house. Please remove anything, including the fence away from my property before May 15th. 2023. Otherwise, I will act to clean all the stuffs from my property. Any result it may cause will be your responsibilities and at your expenses. Drop me a letter in my mailbox if you have any questions. And that was on April 29th, 2023. So she gave them a good two weeks. And then she did follow up, she said, with them on May 15th when they did not uh, take it down. I threatened to take me to court. Then, as you saw, we trying to cut the fence ourselves. After their videos, they finally removed the fence from my property to our property line. However, you can see from the survey, it says they, there is no fence on the property line. The fence still prevents me from repairing my house. What can I do? Thanks for your time. It does say no fence on there. I don't know what that means. Yeah, was that them saying that they like didn't put a fence in? Like they're just lying? Or is that there's not allowed to be a fence? No, no. So what that is is a survey from the city and those are created when the like lots are made and when the houses are made. And those surveys are always taken into account and followed when you're putting up a fence or something like that because you need to know where you can and can't build. That's where they were like, what's your survey? What's your survey? Because which ones do they have? Usually it's like one person like the city. Um, so I don't know how this fence ended up like that, but she's still saying, yeah, they moved it, but it's still not supposed to be here, which honestly, I'm not sure if that's what that little like no fence scribbling on that page means, but it certainly seems like a fence is not supposed to be there, bitch. Like 
She can't walk through there. And, like, what do you mean they moved it, but it's, like, by, like, an inch? Like, that that, that doesn't solve her grievance to be. It really doesn't. Like, she would have to still, like, shimmy in there. And even then, I wouldn't do it because I would get stuck. So, yeah, she showed the survey. She showed the notices. Um, Then people started digging into certain things that Tiffany has posted on Facebook and her family members have posted on Facebook. And it became clear that their motives for fighting with this woman and possibly intentionally putting this fence further than they needed to might be questionable. Racist. Mm, Maybe. And that's when this video came out from the Facebook page of Tiffany's mom. This was posted by the family who built the fence. Just keep that in mind and listen very closely. Did you, is something wrong with the fence? No. Do I have a right to don't answer you? Who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? The fuck? Wait, you what you the fence? What the fuck do you? Uh, who do you think you are? Learn how to speak English and then come yeah. back to me. So did you hear her? She said, learn how to speak English and then you could talk to me, which is interesting for many reasons. Because if we remember in that in- initial video that we watched, the man who lives in the house and whose fence it is has a very strong accent. I couldn't really hear that first round, but interesting to know. <laughs> yeah, yes. like it's just like, oh, is it just accents you don't like? Because that's racist. Obviously. It started off with so many people being on Tiffany's side because it just looks like this irate, quote unquote, Karen, who's causing chaos in the neighborhood. And then once it became apparent that she sprays her hose at her, it kind of just tells more of a story of how we possibly got here. I'm not saying that Fence Lady handled it perfectly, but I'm also not saying that I don't get why she might've gotten to that point. It makes sense why she would have let things get her so riled up because she felt like she couldn't communicate with them because it seems like they probably weren't listening, being like, we can't understand you which is bullshit. yeah yeah and the thing is too is like i understand that level of anger have you ever fought with like a random stranger in public it's like 20 times worse than like any text fight anything it becomes this like adrenaline rush of like how dare you like literally like it just feels like this insane injustice and i get getting to that point i also as a homeowner would probably lose my ever loving fucking mind if someone did that and put a fence that close to my house like just i'm like claustrophobic looking at it especially because the kids are like teenagers and like i just know they're throwing attitude left and right you know what i mean and it's just like she's just dealing with all these people who like don't give a fuck like i would probably be very frustrated as well i probably wouldn't avoid that kind of confrontation but what even confuses me about the fence placement is i don't know where they live or where it's like anywhere other than california basically but like fences are along the property line but it usually allows for like walkways on both sides yeah of the house. almost always like where you would keep your trash cans or like stuff like that so it seems pretty insane that they would build it so close that she like couldn't even shimmy down there. <laughs> like, and honestly, I'm talking about even from like, okay, yes, there's a survey, there's a exact way that things are supposed to be done. But even on just like a human level, why would you build a fence that close to your you know, your neighbor's house. I feel like that's fucked up. It just doesn't make sense. Like you would at least leave them a little bit of a walkway. After she put out these videos, everyone did a 180. Everybody was team fence lady and nobody was team Tiffany, especially after they saw like the possibly racist things. And the hose spraying. Yeah, to which Tiffany did respond, basically being like, I'm not racist. Like my family is from blank. (laughs) And it's just like, okay, girl. To talk about the neighbor situation. I've been taking this video so many times about the fence lady and I'm going to finally address it. She's bought that house, I believe four years now. And she bought the house with inspection, knowing that there's a flood in her basement, knowing that there's raccoons that go in her house, knowing all the circumstances above. It's what? giving Ashton Kutcher telling us that Danny Masterson helps the firefighters. Girl, what the fuck does that have to do with shit? She has a lot of house problems. So like, this was just another one. No big deal. Like, what the fuck? Not her outing the raccoon problem. Like, girl, we really didn't need to know that. We're talking about the fence. And honestly, um, your fence probably gave the raccoons a place to like climb and get into her ship easier. So fuck off. Why would you know what her inspection says when she bought her house? That's like private. She what the fuck are you talking about? wanted to have more space on our property line to get access to her AC, knowing that she has access through her backyard, which she didn't show with you. Show you. Wait, 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 didn't she say the AC is on the side of the house? First of all, yes, she did. But then also, um, Fence Lady does address this. She's like, I can't get in through the back either, bitch. It's like six inches of fucking room. It's not enough. Oh my God. And then really where we left off is Fence Lady left us with a message to Tiffany. So she only has three TikToks on her whole page and we've watched two of them. This is the last one. Hi, Tiffany Mirage. 
This is fence lady. <laughs> this is fence I'm lady. I'm trying to send you this Not the introduction. privately, but you have blocked me. Enough is enough. Please respect my privacy, just as I have respected yours. And the police delete anything with my private information from all your social medias in 24 hours. Thank you. Not the demand. I don't know. It got a little, it got a little like taken <laughs> at the end there. It's like you have 24 hours. Uh, but it kind of worked because Tiffany Mirage has been exiled from the internet. She deleted everything. Oh, wow. So like, did you, people just like ream her until she deleted everything? Pretty much. And they were, it, it seems like, regardless of what interactions or disagreements these neighbors had before, Tiffany and her family and her mom and her sister and her father, I guess, were all extremely exploitative in putting all of this shit up on social media consistently through their Facebook, through TikTok, trying to out her through the internet, which is not the fucking way to like solve. Like dox her, basically? I don't know if dox her. When she's saying private information, I didn't personally see any doxing, but I'm not sure if something did happen that I didn't see before it was deleted. But like, just definitely wanting to out her as this like lunatic neighbor. And I feel like that's the age of like TikTok and Facebook that we're at, where it's just like, we're not even just like telling stories anymore. Like my age was like, let's tell stories where like maybe sometimes you could guess who it was about. Now we're just like jamming the fucking cameras in someone's face as soon as we have a disagreement with them. And it seems like they did that for a very long time time to make her seem like an insane person. But honestly, I think that there's various things here that are extremely frustrating, including but not limited to, yeah, she speaks English, but she is limited. Like how fucking annoying is it that you're dealing with people who are fluent in a language that you're not, and you're like trying to get this frustration across through as many avenues as you can, and you can't, and they're being little dicks about it. And then they put that fucking fence up regardless. They don't want to move it. They're spraying you with hoses. They're putting cameras in your face. I'm telling you, I don't know if I would have busted out the chainsaw, but I would have definitely screamed. I, I wouldn't have been proud of it, but I no, would have done yeah. it. No, I, I'm definitely, after this, I'm on fence lady's side. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And then also, I think, like, she doesn't seem, especially because, like, she created a TikTok just for this. This lady's not on fucking TikTok. She's probably not even on Facebook. Can you just, like, deal with your shit with her in your own way? Like, you don't have to fucking put everything on the internet. That's pretty much it for fence lady. But I did want to uh, ask you, Lily, do you want to share your horrendous neighbor story? Because you dealt with horrendous neighbors for years. I almost already already brought it up but I didn't want to interrupt. <laughs> I'll try and keep this short. I did a story time on my uh, neighbors, my old apartment, which I lived in, I think it was like four years ultimately. And I just moved like two months ago. When I tell you I was dealing with this from the day I moved in, until the day I moved out. But it started, and you can go watch my story time on my old channel if you'd like. It started out where he, it was a couple, and the guy kind of like gave me like fake acknowledgement that he was gonna like work on the issue because the issue was not like, we didn't have any fences or anything, but he was the apartment above me. And the first time I went up, it was like, I'd gotten back from a, like a red eye trip and I was so tired and I get home and I'm trying to like sit on the couch and watch TV for a minute before I go to sleep. And I just hear just like banging. And the biggest thing I would hear, ever hear, hopefully if I can find some of that, I have probably a thousand videos that I've taken of it. Not all of it you can hear because the fucking iPhone frequency doesn't pick up vibrations like it does. Because I couldn't ever hear them talking. It was just moving furniture and stomping. It sucks for you because second floor apartments are kind of like you're shit out of luck because you're gonna hear them walking. You're gonna hear them moving everything. But the way you describe it is it was worse than normal. It was like when I could clearly tell what the noise was, which was moving furniture, why are you needing to move your like giant couch and table every five minutes for like, I'm not shitting you, six hours straight. It got to the point where, and I'm not trying to be dramatic, the anxiety, like I would sit and just cry because it was also when my back was really not doing well and I like didn't have the mental capacity to deal with a bunch of other stuff too. And I'd be trying to work or I'd be trying to sleep, even watch a movie or something. And it'd be like, oh, it's quiet for a sec. And then it was just like, like constantly. And then further than that, I was even more upset because poor little Max was 
terrified of these noises. And he would like come up to me like shaking, like full on like vibrating. And I'm like, I'm sorry, I don't know what to tell you. I can't get them to stop, I've tried. <laughs> I go up after I'm on this flight, I'm so tired and they're being so loud and it's like 11 at night. And I go up and knock on the door, which is very unlike me because I hate confrontation. But I knock on the door because I'm so just out of it and tired. I'm probably still drunk from my flight home. <laughs> and I was like, I'm really sorry, but I don't know what you guys are doing. Can you please quiet down? And all I could see was that he had like some kind of, I think it was like his nephew or something. The two of them are alone in this apartment. But the nephew I could see, he was like kind of jumping over the couches and stuff. So God knows what they were doing up there. If I lived on top of you with Noah, and Amelie, you would think that it was like 17 elephants stomping around. No, but that would make sense because I actually talked to like every other neighbor in my building to see if they had similar issues <laughs> because I complained to management dozens of times, not just by my own word. I had videos, I had responses from him. Like we exchanged numbers after this first time. And then he tried to be like, well, I mean, we're tiptoeing through the apartment and like it's apartment living. So like you should expect that. At the time I was like, I'm 30. I've lived in quite a few apartments and I have had upstairs neighbors and this has never been an issue. And the fact that I couldn't hear them talking definitely makes me think it was a building, like soundproofing issue. It was constructed poorly and we were the first ones to That's what I was there. thinking. Like, insulation or something was fucked up there. Yeah, so like obviously not their fault, but like if I'm even hammering something on the wall, I'm doing it like so quickly trying to like not make it a prolonged thing. I had never heard them make noise for less than like two hours at a time, maximum like eight hours straight. Uh, so I Remember when I moved so it would be quiet? So we had had this text conversation and it seems civil still, but then um, I would text them periodically in the future when it got really bad because it would wake me up at two in the morning, four in the morning. Things escalated when I started complaining to the business or the to the building manager because they of course tell them. I don't know what those conversations look like, but apparently the biggest complaint they had was that when it would get really bad, I would like bang on the wall. Yeah. When I say bang on the wall, I do like a good like one, two, three, just to be like, hey guys, I can hear you. Can you please like, it wasn't even like supposed to be passive aggressive, but it's like, I shouldn't have to go upstairs and beg you to stop when you're doing weird shit up there. Cut to, I make a video and it's called like my psycho neighbors or something. Obviously that was a bit like, they're not psych. It was, that's what other people titled their videos. And Believe me, that, I know. It just worked for the algorithm. In the video, I never call them psycho. I never even remotely identify them in any way. The most I've shared about their identities is that they are a couple. Cut to uh, them smoking hookah on their balcony one day. They would like be ashing whatever, the, I don't really know how hookahs work, but they would be taking it and like dumping it off the side. So I'm seeing fiery embers coming down. Hookah's like a circle charcoal that like, they would have to throw the whole puck over it once it's like all ash. Which they did. I have videos of that as well. That's so crazy. <laughs> and it was literally like burning embers coming down. And there's like, not grass, but it was like landscaping and stuff below. So I'm like, also I think there was a bunch of fires going on at the time. So it was just like, what are you, like that, what are you doing? And they would have parties all the time. And a lot of these parties included their family. So a lot of like nieces and nephews would come over. So that is when I understand like there's running and stuff. When it's kids, I get that. And other neighbors have said that they had kids living above them and the parents had already in the beginning been like, I'm so sorry, I know this is gonna be a lot. Please text us if there's like an exceptionally bad, like we're trying to make it quiet, but like, let us know. These people didn't have kids. At the time it was just family members. They also were having all these gatherings during the Pete, like during the very beginning of quarantine, they would have like 30 person parties right above me. Headphones can't get rid of it because it's vibrations that you feel like through your whole, like I would have a water sitting on a table and you could see the water vibrating. Oh my God, but that is a construction issue too. Holy shit. 
That's that should not happen. I'm telling you, it was, but then they were just like very inconsiderate and had no volume control whatsoever. So it was a combo. But then I make this video explaining all of this. Again, I don't mention any identifying features. And like, I guess we probably introduced ourselves name wise when I first met him, but like he is saved in my phone as upstairs neighbor. I do not even know their names. Well, it turns out they know my name. They found my video. <laughs> That's the worst. That referred to them as the psycho neighbors. So you can imagine that made me want to crawl in a hole and die. Oh, they also had a cleaning crew come at least once a week, which is fine. Good for them. I wish I had that. But specifically, they'd go on the balcony, which here's a picture of the balcony. It wasn't that big. Where would you possibly be moving in that? This is like the chair sliding. Where are you moving them to? It would be an hour straight of them just sliding and it's so loud. And that one would just like vibrate through the whole apartment. So she's out there one day and I was trying to get work done and it was taking so long and I like start banging on the wall and then she starts yelling. She's like, hey, hey, you down there. So I'm like, oh fuck. So I go on the balcony and I like kind of look up and she is like, of course scolding me because I'm in the wrong here. I like am so pissed at this point. And I was like, great, are you having another party during social like and I wasn't even trying to be like a Karen or stickler about all that but it was like literally they had 30 people over when COVID first started and you didn't really know like what was particularly safe or not and her response was why don't you go inside and make another YouTube video oh no oh I would have died <laughs> and in that that moment I just like Oh no, oh no, oh no. Cause like, what are what are the odds? Did it come up on their for you? Like on their like suggested? Wait, wait, or did wait, they wait, look wait, up wait, my wait, name wait. That somehow? doesn't necessarily mean that they saw your YouTube video about them. That means that they know you're a YouTuber. Make another YouTube about us. Oh, they said, oh, oh, then yes. Sorry, I, I think I left that out, but it, it was very clearly she was referring to that. Then cut to me being terrified and then me even getting scolded anytime. Like I probably could count on two hands, like how many times over the course of four years I banged on the wall and it was never anything more than like, hey, excuse me, I'm here. Can you maybe be a little more considerate? I mean, there's not a very gentle way to bang on the wall. They probably took it as a hostile thing for sure. Yeah, but like, fuck, they had been making noise for six hours. Like, sorry. All I'm saying is you see, that's why we shouldn't judge Fence Lady for screaming. Sometimes people just lose it because it's been little thing after little thing after little thing. But it was like literally with my hand against the wall. Like I couldn't have been that aggressive. Also, I live alone and I don't do well with confrontation. And the guy came down one time in the, before I get to the, <laughs> the real confrontation. The guy came down at one point because they were having a big party, at least 40 people there probably this time. And he comes down because I had banged on the wall a, a couple times and he is screaming at me, like kicked my like outside wall as he was leaving. He was just being a complete dick. From then on, I was like, I'm never opening the door for them again. Because he even, um, when he first got there, he was like, can I come in? I was like, no, who, no. no who, who, what? Absolutely not. Cut to like six months later or something. I had basically just been like, well, I guess my life is going to be miserable and me and my dog are just going to have increased anxiety until I move out. But <laughs> there was one time that the banging and stuff wasn't just banging. And this isn't one time. This was like over the course of the entire thing. It wasn't always happening, but they would start screaming at each other and get in these blowout fights. And I would wake up to them at four in the morning and it sounded like temper tantrums of toddlers. It would be like screaming, screaming, screaming. It would then escalate to uh, the fight would like kind of like end for the moment. And then one of them would just like stomp out as if they're just trying to make as much noise as possible. And then two seconds later you'd hear like a giant crash like something falling or like to the point that I almost called the police a few times but then it always sounded fine afterwards like it would be someone would throw something or something I at this point had not complained in so long and I was feeling petty so I went on my Twitter which I wasn't aware that they would be stalking in the future but you know after they saw my YouTube video I guess they were keeping tabs and I tweeted if I was less broke and more petty I would gift my neighbors marriage counseling for Christmas I'm in the parking garage a few days later and she comes up and I tend to sit in my car a lot after I get home from somewhere I'm like scrolling on my phone and I didn't even see her she comes up and knocks on my window and I'm like oh fuck it so <laughs> I open it up just I need to talk to you so I like kind of like get out of my car and she goes <laughs> We need you to stop tweeting about us. It's making us very uncomfortable. Oh my God. And I literally God. looked at her and I go, do you want to know what's making me uncomfortable? <laughs> I wake up to you guys screaming at each other. 
constantly. If it's not screaming, it's furniture moving. It's vacuuming that is so loud that I don't, like what kind of vacuum do you have honestly? Cause I'm just curious. But like I was being pretty civil and I kept trying to be like, cause she was very upset. And I was like, can we just like take a moment like and just like start fresh right now? I'm telling you, I would not be trying to make a big deal about that. Like, I don't want to make a big deal about this. It's just that it literally has been interfering with my sleep, my work, my, like anything I do, I can't sit for more than 15 minutes without it, something coming up. She acts like she has no idea what I'm talking about and just keeps yelling at me. Um, and I think that was pretty much it. It resulted in me um, basically having a panic attack and having to leave. From then on, I avoided them at all costs because I was just scared of them. And they continued. And up until the day I moved two months ago, it was, the worst thing ever. How nice has it been not having them be your neighbors? It's funny because it's almost like, you know, when something's like, even like a body pain, like if something hurts, as soon as it doesn't hurt anymore, you kind of like forget that it did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll have a moment where I'm like, oh, Oh my God, Max hasn't come up to me shaking in two months. Like I felt so bad for him and all of it because there was nothing I could do to the point that I used to take him out for like a quick walk around the block and he would get to the end of the block and just plant himself and not walk home because he was too scared and I had to carry him back inside. So I'm like, it really was not me exaggerating being like, I hate noise. It was like, no, this is out of control and you people are crazy. Having a shit neighbor or a neighbor that's just like very not concerned with you as a person or like just literally just not giving a fuck about how they act can really, really affect your fucking mental health, everything. I mean, there's nothing worse than not feeling safe or comfortable in your own home. No, they're, they're genuinely like they were mean people. Yikes. Well, I'm glad you're out of that situation. And Sorry, that was way longer than it should have been, but it was a long four years. It really did like very much affect, like I was on edge all the time. Yeah, but that was, that was Fencegate. A little old, but now you know what Fencegate is if uh, anybody asks about it in your life, which they will not. Okay, so we have one more topic, but we don't, we're kind of in a rush to film because Jesse has somewhere to be, but um, you guys will know what I'm talking about, I think, because it seems like everyone is following it. But I come across from a few tags, but then even on my own, came across this thing on my Twitter where there is this lady that has started hosting, I guess you would call it like a webinar or like a online class of some kind where she charges $11 to join. Oh, and period, a bargain. You know how um, even when like Jake Paul did his like, I don't know what it was called, but his like- The university thing. thing. I was gonna say Hustlers University, but wasn't that- No, that's Andrew Tate. Andrew Tate. This is a woman that charges $11. And I will say, I think a lot of the people that paid the $11 weren't doing it because they actually wanted to know they were just gonna make fun of it, which is thanks to them because now we have this story. But basically the gist is, is this lady held a class where she <laughs> explains to people how you don't need glasses. Glasses are just a barrier that you're putting between yourself and the world. And it's like your eyesight can be healed holistically. That is pretty slay. I don't know how many people know this, but I have a uh, severe astigmatism and I also like need glasses for everything. Like on top of astigmatism, I'm, which ones? I'm always fucked. I think I'm farsighted. No, I think I'm nearsighted. Why do they make it opposite to make it extra confusing? But whatever, I'm one of those two. But I've worn glasses since the third grade and my son wears glasses and I'm pretty sure my daughter's gonna need glasses too. I, I just gave them both my shitty eyesight. Apparently, Jesse, you didn't. They just need to heal their inner child, which is ironic because they're still children. I don't wear contact lenses anymore. I did for a couple years and then I just honestly, I just stopped. I don't really know why I stopped. But so right now I'm not wearing anything and ask Lily how much I struggle to read things. And my monitor is like two feet away from me and I cannot read the shit that we're talking about. So it'll take me like a million times or Lily will be like, let me just read it. <laughs> just like, like, often that's why I'm doing the cold reads. <laughs> Everything just looks very blurry. And like at night, oh my God, driving at night without glasses to me is like actually dangerous because I have no depth perception and all the lights blur together with very strong lines. If someone like breaks, I don't know, 200 feet away from me, it looks like they're directly in front of me and I slam on the brakes because it's so bright and like foggy that I can't tell how far that car is. So I'm interested to see how I can heal that by probably eating a bunch of, uh, what is it called? Apricot seeds? What is it? <laughs> I don't even know if that's what she offers, but um, wait a sec. Um, Anti-glasses influencer, Samantha... <laughs> 
first of all, anti-glasses influencer, where where are we where have we gotten in society? Is it weird that I'm not even like I'm like, oh okay. Like, I'm not like, surprised oh, by anything. Ooh, that exists. Anti-glasses influencer Samantha Lotus makes bizarre claims she can fix your vision. Do it. I dare you. <laughs> the sub headline is seeing is believing. Okay, so here is what started it. It's like her first like push for people to take this class. What's the one thing that your optometrist doesn't want you to know about? The fact that you do not need glasses. That's right, you may have been told that you need glasses, but that's actually a lie. There are mental, emotional, physical, and even spiritual reasons why you may not be seeing, and I'm here to tell you that that can be healed. If you wanna learn more, read the comments. My question is how many uh, fruits or whatever the fuck do I need to eat to make my eyes no longer football shaped? Because that's literally why they're, uh, I have astigmatism. They're shaped differently than normal eyes. I don't know if she can reshape your eyes. She can just um, heal your inner child and make the vision come back. Bro, how delusional do you have to be to like trick yourself into thinking <laughs> you healed your vision? All right, so for you guys, this was a second uh, difference from what we were just talking about, whatever that may be. I certainly don't remember, but this is the next day and obviously sometimes Lily and I don't touch base and she thought we were just gonna like dress the same and pretend it was the same day and I assumed we weren't doing that so yeah, I was going for continuity are. so I even got another truly out and everything oh yeah it being that's really what you were going for anyway we're just gonna continue on the reason why we had to stop is because I had to go and we were desperately looking for this fucking video of this glasses lady and we couldn't find it but the funny thing is is that like it's still on her TikTok I think she just deleted it from Twitter but like the Twitter thread I I had originally looked at was a video and then suddenly now it was all pictures of her like just going through step by step of the presentation. Anyway, I don't remember what I explained last time. Jesse, you haven't seen any of it? From what I remember, we did watch the video where she was saying you don't need glasses and that's where we left off. Let's go on to um, this next slightly and by slightly, I mean much more aggressive advertisement. <laughs> You're listening to this that think this is quackery, that think this is that say it's not possible you can choose to stay blind that's right <laughs> oh but i have done this on myself i have worked with my clients i have worked with family members i have seen people take off their glasses and not need them anymore over and over and over again and no i'm not just saying take off your glasses and go drive at night there is a process to healing your eyesight <laughs> i cut off the end part because i had a little rant about close-mindedness and that's okay i don't need to don't need to speak to the deaf or show <laughs> things to the blind <laughs> my favorite thing though is when people tell me that it's not possible to do something that i've already done and over and over it's repeatable it's now proven people are like you, you can't do that i'm like no but no but i am They're like well it's not possible i'm like no but but i i did do that oh well no that can't happen oh but but it is and that's the thing some people live with their eyes and their mind completely glued shut oh is that so? and they're just you know that's okay that's their thing yet it's not the truth all that to say there is a master class <laughs> on healing your vision in a holistic way it's happening tomorrow it's $11. I've upgraded my Zoom capacity so we can fit in all of you. I'm really excited to go deep to blast your eyes and your mind wide open and to give you the goods. We are going to have so much fun. This is probably your last chance to enroll because I'm not going to be sharing more of this because I am going deep into deep, deep, deep into some beautiful practices for myself <laughs> so I can show up as the most inspiring, empowering <laughs> teacher that you ever did. So um, blind people get in line because she's gonna fix your vision. You know what I find really interesting? Not solely her insane level of delusion. It's actually like I'm jealous of it because if you believe anything enough, like I do believe that you can trick yourself into believing that. So like, I do believe she probably thinks she cured her eyesight and like bitch just learned how to like live 
through like blurriness. You know what I'm saying? Like you could be that well, level of delusion. I would like you to repeat that after we've watched all of it. Okay, but what I was thinking was it's so interesting when people practice this like spiritual and everything is can be holistic and all you gotta do is really tap within yourself. And then they just are like so mean and like bitchy. <laughs> it's like, why isn't that working for you though? Like, aren't you supposed to be like kumbaya, like figured it all out, mindfulness living? Like she just seems really angry. And first of all, why don't you go, if you're so good at this, why don't you go heal actual blind people and not just people who like kind of low key see a little tiny bit blurry? I want to see what you can do, girl. Mm, me think she's not as confident as <laughs> <laughs> she comes off. But um, there's one more and then we'll watch basically a cliff note of the masterclass. So there, there is a quick disclaimer. Oh, I wonder what that is. To make a clarification, although it's wildly mind blowing that I... I even need to do this. For those of you who have interpreted my message that you don't need glasses, that humans don't have a biological need for glasses, uh, it is not to say that if you currently have a visual impairment to take off your glasses and go drive a vehicle. In fact, in my masterclass, I make that blatantly clear. Ooh, right? blatant, we're, we're not blatant. ridiculous here. <laughs> we're talking about healing or improving significantly vision, significantly. which is what our bodies are made to do. We're made and designed to see and healing our eyesight or drastically improving it is actually, actually very biologic. It's quite simple. Mm, it's we ableism. need to give our eyes and our minds, our brains, the things it needs to see. Which is her masterclass, apparently. <laughs> she freaks me out. I don't like her at all. You obviously can't just take your glasses off and go drive at night. First you have to pay $11, then you can. Why $11? That's such a funny amount. It is kind of a strange amount. <laughs> and I guess um, the girl says it in her video, but I think it's like a couple hundred people at least signed up for it. So I don't know how many of those people were all also doing it as a joke, but like she made a lot of money. Are you ready for the masterclass that we don't have to pay I am eleven dollars so for? Thanks to Mallory. Is she gonna like uh, take down our channel? Um, no, she's too busy. I'm um, stalking Mallory. We'll go over that later. Okay, but um, thank God, sorry, Mallory. But like, so and it's funny because Mallory, uh, from what I gather, I didn't do a deep dive on her. Like you know how um, Cece Suarez does exposing MLMs. That's like what she does, but it's like holistic healers kind of. Oh, period. I love that. I don't okay. know if she does like long form videos, but her Twitter you can see quite a bit on it and it's very entertaining. And I'll say right now, I don't think holistic healing is like absolutely everyone is crazy. I just think no. we've talked about before. It's like, yeah, you can do like holistic approaches to certain things, but there's other things. Like you wouldn't break your arm and then just like will it back to being not broken. I take like plenty of things and my husband's super into holistic things and just, but we go to the doctor, you know, our kids, like if they're sick or they have a fever, we're not gonna let them suffer because yes, fevers are the way of the body, like regulating itself and getting rid of something it's fighting, but like, I'm not gonna let my kids go through pain. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like there's a Well, I mean, line. and you guys wear glasses, like a bunch of dumbasses. so. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just gonna take my sons off and be like, good luck. Bah! No, we just need to heal your inner child. Oh, you're still a child, whoops. <laughs> okay, are you ready? Born ready for this. The fact that you do not need glasses. That if you heard about the woman who was claiming she could help you ditch your glasses and heal your vision in her masterclass, uh, I am happy to report that I paid $11 this morning to attend so that you didn't have to. This is Samantha you, Lotus. Her course was called the Holistic Vision Healing Masterclass and it was $11 to attend. I first want to say that when she started this, she said even though there was no more than 130 people in the room at once, she did say that she had 465 people register, which means that in this two and a half hours, she made over $5,000 doing That's this. That's insane. So keep that in mind Jesus. as I start explaining the types of things that she talked about. We are off to a great start here with a legal disclaimer saying I'm not a pharma doctor. And if anyone wants to explain to me what pharma doctor means, <laughs> that'd be great. She's not a medical advisor. This is for holistic, educational, and empowerment purposes. Not entertainment. She started off with medical reasons why you might not be able to see. Um, so these are things that you might have heard from your optometrist. But she described these uh, as not root causes, only diagnoses. And this is where it starts to take a turn because we get into the holistic, uh, the spiritual, the mental, the emotional side of why you might not be able to see. So suggesting that you can't 
um, C2020 vision because you have uh, unbalanced spirituality, because you have some sort of blockages. So, you know, it's like all your fault, basically. We did a few eye health breaks, um, like eye stretching. She kept calling it eye yoga. It's pretty much the nicest part of the whole thing. At this point, she suggested that you could, in fact, change your eye color through cellular cleansing and proper detoxification. All I could think of that uh, during that part was, doesn't, like, I want to say, like, Grande Lash or, like, one of the lash enhancers, there's, like, a risk that your eyes could change colors. Like, not all of it even, but if you had, like, blue eyes, it might put, like, some splotches in them or something. What the fuck? I didn't know that. That's terrifying. I don't want to say that that was for sure Grande Lash, but some kind of lash enhancement, I've seen that as a warning before. At this point, we're about 30 minutes into the two hour masterclass, haven't really learned anything tangible yet. And she spends about like five to 10 minutes just giving testimonials from people who she has allegedly helped, including her own husband. And the funniest part about the whole thing that I will not let go is you can see the second from the top line says named best vision in the military. What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> Where did that award come from? Who decided this? I just, again, this like, you can't see because you just need to let go of the belief that you can't see. And she talked about how like, glasses are just a barrier between you and the rest of the world. And like, what are you hiding from? Then we said some affirmations. Blindness. Together. <laughs> so like the last one says, I see with love and joy. My third eye is awake and aware. With each blink, my eyes are refresh and renew. This is where things get interesting. There is a sample week slide of things that you can do. We have spiritual, mental, emotional, and then physical. The second last line from the bottom under physical says that you can use eye strengthening oils dash immortel. I know that Samantha is a rep for doTERRA, sells essential oils oh, under a multi-level no. marketing uh -huh, structure. Uh -huh. And I have been waiting for her to mention it because I know that she can't resist. Immortal is a doTERRA essential oil. And so now this whole masterclass is starting to make sense. <laughs> it's a Trojan horse to pitch an MLM. That becomes abundantly clear when she shares the story of her brother. Apparently got into an accident, was not doing well allegedly received a not too promising uh, outcome from the doctor, but he recovered in full health now. Uh, and that bottle looks awfully familiar. Remind me <laughs> what this one looks like. Third line from the top, essential oils around the eyes two times a day. Wait, that's actually fucking, that is so, so, so dangerous. I am so shocked that she can even- Putting essential oils by your eyes? Absolutely, but also doTERRA is a very, very problematic MLM. I mean, most MLM companies are problematic, but doTERRA, I learned from Cece Suarez, I'm pretty sure. They all the time are making the most insane health claims. Like the distributors for doTERRA or the people that work for them, they are constantly being like, my friend had cancer and she rubbed essential oil on her tits and now she's free. Like it's fucking insane. I don't understand how these people don't get sued for like false advertising. Well, they do get in trouble a lot. The FTC has come for multiple MLM companies. I know they came for, was it Monet? And then Monet asked people like their distributors like, hey, please stop making claims because we're getting in trouble. So like they are slowly but surely getting in trouble, but it is so fucking insane to me because essential oil, there's so many things to essential oil. Number one, if they're even pure or not, that's a whole separate thing, but they need to be diluted. And even when they're diluted, they are absolutely not safe for consumption or to like put in areas like that, your fucking eyes. Do you know how sensitive, not only the skin around our eyes, but our actual eyes are? She's a fucking lunatic for suggesting this. That's so crazy. I guess I'm curious with the top of the MLM that are training these people, are they telling them to make it up or are they like just somehow encouraging it without telling them? So I used to be in an MLM and honestly, you knew that, right? Or no? I know, I was like, she's a reformed MLM girly. I did it like at the end of my teen years and I just got sucked in and whatever. But it's not so much that the company tells you things per se. When you go to those events that are like paid for by them and stuff, it's very culty. Everyone is like, this is the best thing and it changed this person's life. And so they do like all just kind of like share stories as a form of like quote unquote empowerment, but it's very much so like encouraging other people to do the same. It's kind of like not to bring religion into this, but it's kind of like religion, you know, when like one person's like, oh, this is how it changed my life. Then it just like keeps rolling and everyone wants to share their testimony. It's very similar with MLMs. I just wonder like, how do you get to the level of saying, well, 
what was it that the brother got in like a car accident? How do you decide that you're gonna use your brother as like a sales tactic? Oh, they all do that. They'll do it with friends who have cancer. They'll do it with anybody and any tragedy that they can. Like, are those people okay with it though? I don't know so much. It, I guess it would depend on every situation, but like- Or do they know even? <laughs> that's a good question. They might not even know. But yeah, I, I, it's a very, very bizarre environment where telling stories like this are like totally acceptable. And everyone's like, oh my God, yeah, same. I, you know, put essential oil in a diffuser and all of a sudden I don't have allergies anymore. It's like, that's not how life also, works. Also, I'm just now reading the whole slide behind her right now. And it's her little brother's story. It says, the way he overcame his uh, diagnosis apparently is mind power and visualization. Healthy diet, no hospital food. Essential oils around the eyes, surrounded by love and full faith. Uh, are you? I can Just leave those last two out. Anyway. Your class exists for this reason. And if you didn't believe me before, there's an entire slide for it. And if you still didn't believe me, these are doTERRA products. <laughs> That's a doTERRA product. There's a video that I have of her talking that I can't seem to fit in here. Um, and she's basically talking about doTERRA products completely unrelated to vision. And as a reminder, this masterclass is supposed to be about healing vision. She just talks about how much she loves the company and Ooh. how amazing the products are. Convenient. In the Q&A after, she uh, <laughs> unprompted showed everyone on the call where to go uh, for more information on doTERRA if you want to work with her. And if you want to buy this product. This is also a not funny slide. Um, what about children? Suggesting that the same protocols or similar protocols can be used on children so they don't have to wear glasses. And as a reminder, Samantha herself said that 465 people registered and an $11 a head that is over $5,000 for two and a half hours of her time to basically end up in a doTERRA sales pitch. I would just like to say, Mallory, hats off to you for sitting through two and a half hours of that. Jesus, I know. <laughs> like, oh my God, I wouldn't be, I don't, I wouldn't be able to. It sounds miserable. The sales pitch. To me, in my opinion, based on my observations, this is textbook grift. This woman made $5,000 this morning telling a Zoom room of people that if only they would work harder on their spirituality Surround and their mental state and their emotion <laughs> state, that they too could heal their vision and ditch their glasses. And then I don't even want to think about <laughs> how she'll benefit from folks reaching out to her for the doTERRA business opportunity or to buy products from her. The funniest part about this is the legal disclaimer at the beginning, which she gave that she wasn't a pharma doctor. Before the Q&A, she also gave a disclaimer that she uh, wasn't an eye care expert. And then she went on to give uh, ad like medical advice, which included doTERRA oils and other products. Someone asked about ADHD oh, and her really? <laughs> her response to that was, oh, well, if we just didn't have so many tabs open on our computer, we'd all be fine. That's I'm it. begging everyone it. here <laughs> to stop taking master classes from random people on the internet who have no idea what the fuck they're talking about. I wonder how many people in that class were for real. That's what I said. I was like, I don't know how many of those people were just like also like Mallory and just wanted to see what bullshit it was because like a lot dollars isn't a lot if you thought that was entertaining. So you've alluded to something crazy happening after this and I want to see. After Mallory posts that, <laughs> I think it got some traction. Actually, well, let me, I wonder how many views it has. This was only three days ago and she has 7,000 followers. So it wasn't like she had a huge, oh my God, it's been viewed 2.5 million times. That's hilarious. Okay, so um, Samantha understandably was a little peeved at that. As I said, there's also, if you're curious, I'll link it in the description if I remember, that uh, Mallory has a thread that is not a video and it has like all the slides so you can look at it. She also has a thread <laughs> where she posts on Twitter about the aftermath of this, she goes, update. She thinks I'm a teenager. I'm almost 32, only three years younger than her. And I'll apparently be hearing from her lawyers for commentary on a presentation that she has given lifetime access to. <laughs> Next tweet is, all right, Twitter, what do we think of this? I'm in Canada, if that helps. Since yesterday, I've been given lifetime access to the masterclass recording. And Samantha Lotus messages her and goes, hey, Mallory, since your posts about, oh, th this is apparently from Samantha and team. So they refer to Samantha in the third person because I'm sure Samantha has a team. Hey, Mallory, since your posts about Samantha go against intellectual property laws, as well as protective regulations against defamation, this is a courtesy message letting you know you have 24 hours to remove your posts 
post before we move forward with legal action. Warm regards, Samantha and team. Then she says, we have your IP address from where you purchased the private masterclass and screen recorded videos of you sharing the entire masterclass content online. When you purchased, you agreed to the terms, even though you didn't use your name to purchase or join the Zoom room. And then she says, this was in the terms and conditions I signed, but I'm wondering how it stands up to Canadian laws. I'd be fine taking the video and threats down if I had to, because I don't care enough and we'll find another way to report it all. And apparently the notice is a copyright notice and says all content in this masterclass, including text, graphics, images, and other materials is protected by copyright and may not be used, shared, or even screenshotted without express written permission by Samantha Lois. To do so is a direct violation of intellectual property laws. Is it? Because I feel like you just wrote that. I mean, she did just write that, but at the if same time, I don't know. Like, can't you just write anything and if you agree to it, you have to But if she didn't even it? use her real name. <laughs> that's a sticky situation because I was like, oh, if it's like vague or something in the terms and condition, but that's not vague at all. And also that Samantha is in another country too. Mallory's in Canada, but then Samantha, someone posted, is in, I want to say she's in like Brazil. So it's all very uh, murky. There. Yeah. Like, I don't know if you can really go after her for this. But so then she continues, sent to my private Facebook profile. This is getting creepy. And it's Samantha Lotus going, found you. Oh my God. Jeez, what a weirdo. Then she messages her again and says, I see you went to blank and we have mutual friends. Interesting. Gross, what the hell? Wouldn't your team say maybe don't do this? <laughs> then she says, adding LinkedIn to the platforms that she's messaged me on. No. She said, I have 24 hours, but this is the third platform she's messaged me on just this afternoon. And she says, hello, Mallory. Have you had a chance to review what we've been sending you? Her and her team, that is. Also, Samantha Lotus is listed is holistic master coach, human optimization specialist, and business consultant. What the fuck is a human optimization specialist? That's a lot of words to say nothing. Well, she wasn't done because then her partner added Mallory on Facebook as well. No, mm. no, bro. Oh my God, that is fucking crazy. And I think that's it for the uh, general stalking, but I guess there's a QA and a portion. She says, someone just asked about putting saliva in your eyes before sun gazing and Samantha replied, I don't know, but try it out. Someone asked if she had any tips for ADHD and she said yes. So now she's giving advice on ADHD. And apparently after all of this, I don't think that uh, Samantha and her team actually pursued any legal action because now it would have passed 24 hours and we haven't heard anything, but it it is interesting to note that Samantha has gone private on Instagram saying, due to the mega influx of comments and messages, literally thousands, I won't be able to check or respond to messages for a while. I've also made my profile private for now and not accepting new follower requests to protect my energy because she needs that energy obviously to keep, keep making herself not blind. I'm going to have my VA in here. What's that? Virginia? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like something is virtual assistant, maybe. Oh, period. You're smart. Okay. Um, I'm going to have my VA in here clearing space and getting to as much as possible. Thank you for understanding. Girl, what the fuck did you think was going to happen? I really don't know. How do these people get to the point where they're like, like you said earlier, like, does she really believe it? Or I don't think so. I think she's trying to sell her essential oils and get people in on that. Yes, but it's not like all cut and dry. It's not like she's just like grifting because she She's just this like person who wants money. There is a certain level of delusion where she does believe a lot of this shit that makes her so confident in wanting to teach it. Like, I don't think that she like doesn't believe that she can cure vision at all. I think part of her believes it. Now, I think the mind is a very powerful thing and I think you can convince yourself of probably anything like with pain for instance there's people that practice that like monks and stuff will be in certain like ice baths or something for a long time where most people can't do that and they like just focus and what there is ways to train your brain to do really cool shit with your body and to like for overcome sure. a lot of like the you know i guess automatic body functions i don't think that applies to like glaucoma no <laughs> no it doesn't at all and it doesn't apply to astigmatism or just like general yeah. blindness like what i'm saying is like i don't doubt that if she really like completely thought that she cured her vision, she would learn to trick herself into thinking like my blurry vision is no longer blurry. Although I did think it was funny that in, I think it was the disclaimer that we watched in the beginning that she mentioned something like curing your vision or significantly improving it. Right, it's like, right. Oh, 
well now it's not just like, oh, you don't need glasses at all. Now it's suddenly like, well, it'll get better. I wish that it was just the bullshit of like spirituality and believing in it and not the added layer of the MLM and the essential oils around your eyes and asking people to put that anything makes in it or around sketchy. their eyes. Well, it makes it dangerous. Like it yeah. genuinely does. Well, and that she's giving medical advice on other things that are not even related to vision. Although she did also say that she's not like an expert in vision, which seems strange if you think you can cure blindness. I was just thinking too that doTERRA is expensive as literally all MLMs are so expensive because they have to um, still make money after giving their associates uh, money. If someone doesn't have access to doTERRA because it's too expensive, watch them fucking put some other essential oil around their eye and fucking burn the shit out of themselves. Like it's like, fuck my life. And then she says same protocol for kids. Are you joking? Like That's the thing. Oh, I'm I like, can't. how are you doing this and feel okay about it? Like you can't possibly believe all of that. Well, and also it's, it's so interesting to see as well the level of privilege that comes with people like this like she's just like oh be surrounded by love bitch like what the fuck like not everybody has that so those people have to wear glasses because they're just fucked like it's just oh my god i can't i feel like this is also like comparative <laughs> to if I just said like, oh, I want my metabolism to speed up. And it's like, I really focused on it. And I was like, I don't want to like diet or anything. I just really want to believe and be surrounded by love and believe that I'm going to lose weight just because. Like it's giving that, like that's not how this fucking works. And if it worked like that, everyone would do it. I bet you for sure there's some people doing the same type of masterclasses with weight loss. Like oh, I didn't you diet know at it. all and look at me. Yeah, wow, what a journey. That was yeah. interesting. Um, so you guys uh, told me about that. Uh, so a few people tagged me on um, Twitter and that was only it. Honestly, the reason we had trouble finding the video is because I was trying to go through my mentions, but quick little side note is that I had tweeted about this girl named apparently Joy Sparkles. I wasn't aware, which uh, clearly everyone else in the universe was, <laughs> except us. Joy has been around for quite some time. I came across her on TikTok because she kept popping up mostly when I was searching for assets for our eight passengers updates and stuff, that she was popping up all the time. And I would see the little, like the caption, the title to the videos, and they were just like bullshit. I would read some of them and I'm like, that didn't happen. Like, I'm positive that didn't happen. I've been up to date, like following everything about this case. That is not true. And then I would click on it and guess what? She had absolutely nothing to offer. But then when she kept coming up on my For You page afterwards, I was like, who is this bitch and why is she posting so much? To the point that I counted from September 2nd to September 12th, she posted over 85 videos about that family. And not all about like Ruby, it was about the kids too. And also lies about Ruby, which like Ruby's already a monster. Don't give us a reason to like need to defend her because you're making shit up. So that was just really alarming and disgusting to me. Like, yes, we're giving updates, but we're not like trying to exploit the situation for views. And that's literally her entire TikTok for the last 10 days has been strictly that. So I post that on Twitter because, you know, I wanted to just be like, oh, if you see this, like know that she's full of shit. Apparently everyone already knows that because she's been around for years and apparently was really involved in the Onision thing. And then also with Daddy of Five, people were saying she like ruined that case. I don't know what the details around that are, but apparently she's like absolutely crazy and gets obsessed with these cases and then just exploits the shit out of them and has had a bunch of controversies. I don't know if she left YouTube because of all of it, but YouTube was her platform of choice. And now people are like, oh my God, she's back. Apparently she's like a cockroach that won't go away. Yeah, no, I do remember her from back in the day. I used to follow a lot of the Onision shit, but yeah, she is uh, someone that got run off of YouTube and now she's on TikTok and maybe we'll dive into that at some point in life. That was um, a very fun journey. Two day journey. You're welcome. Now. But we we made it. Anyway, that is all that we have for you guys today. So we'll leave you with that. But if you made it to the end, we do appreciate you. I can say we'll leave you with some good vibes to heal your vision and um lose weight and just all you have to do is surround yourself with yeah, love. And drink doTERRA oil or whatever the fuck they say to do. But anyway, uh yeah, that's it. Thank you guys. We love you and we'll see you on Monday. Bye. Bye. <laughs>